Hello everyone, this is Marianne from Revealing Light Tarot. How are you? Wherever you are in the world when you're watching, a huge shout out to you. This is my uh, 22nd of February 2022 video. Uh, and of course, we'll look at some astrology. It's the Pluto return for the US uh, and some transiting planets and what that might mean. And then we'll pull some cards. I don't want to spend too long on the astrology because I've already done a Pluto return video in the past. But there's some a couple of interesting things that I want to focus in on, particularly in conjunction with uh, well, yes, they're, they're the conjunctions I want to talk about, but particularly in conjunction with what is happening in the Ukraine. Uh, now, we know that Pl Pluto, Putin, maybe that's a Freudian slip, is sending troops now into the separatist uh, territories of U Ukraine. He's invaded them, basically. Let's not beat round the bush. Now, there isn't a full-scale... Um, uh, yet response from the US, although there's an executive order that Biden is signing, uh, which says that no one in America, no businesses in America can do business or investments in that Ukrainian uh, territory, occupied territory. Uh, now, I, if you go back to, I think it was when he only had about 10, 20,000 troops there, um, to my first Russian reading, might have been in January, uh, I said this is exactly what he was going to do. He was playing Russian roulette um, and he would then uh, use those separatist, separatist area areas to say that these people wanted to be governed by Russia and so we will, uh, we will take that territory. He's talking about recognising them as a, as a particular state, but the upshot is he's just taken, he's just invaded another country and taken their territory. So the question is, what will the world do beyond Joe Biden's executive order not to trade or not to do business or invest in those occupied territories? I think it will be a joint reaction. We'll, we can throw some cards, whether the US becomes involved beyond what NATO, what Europe, what international law might uh, say about Putin invading another country and, and hiving off territory. We'll, we'll have a look at that. Um, he's trying to do it in a way that will minimise uh, the the blowback but i don't think he's going to be able to do that i don't think he's going to be able to do that uh, i think international law will have something to say and i think europe uh will have something to say europe and the u.s alliances which biden has strengthened and means so um on the front foot about strengthening um i think there's going to be uh action beyond what is taken now, right now. And uh, we can have a look at what that action might be. Ultimately, in the long run, Putin doesn't gain from this. Okay, so let's take a look at the 22nd of the second 2022 transits as, as they are against the US natal chart, which is the 17, 1776 Philadelphia uh, chart. Um, that I'm using. There, there are a, a few natal charts, but this is the one I'm using. Um, let's take a look at it and see whether uh, any of those transits might indicate that there is actually uh, the US going to war with, with Russia, albeit in a coalition with, the, with NATO, whether there's any, well, not so much NATO. NATO won't be triggered until uh, until a member state is invaded. And of course, Ukraine isn't part of NATO. Remembering, of course, that Trump tried to destroy and weaken NATO. Remembering, of course, that Putin has been active in undermining uh, Europe for a long time, including in the Brexit campaign. But he hasn't succeeded. Uh, now, thankfully, Joe Biden is president, not Donald Trump. 
and, uh, and the alliances between the US and Europe and indeed the UK and Europe are as strong as they ha ever have been over the last three or four years. So he's failed on that. Now, numerolo numerologically speaking, the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022, obviously puts the focus on alliances, on partnerships, on diplomacy, um, on collectively coming together to take action rather than authoritarian rule, uh, which, would, uh, which would be Putin. So even you, in numerology, Putin is not winning because the unified force is far stronger than, uh, than the singular force. Uh, unified diplomacy and action, the action of many is far stronger than the action of one. Now, that's not to say that Putin doesn't have allies. He does. And thank you to my viewers for pointing out the Gemini card kept coming up. Uh, I was a little bit mystified uh, as to whether that was Trump or somebody else. Intuitively, I felt he does have allies. Of course, Xi Ping, China's president, is a Gemini. Thank you to the viewer who pointed that out. And we know that there is an alliance between Putin and China. But let's get back to this chart before we pull some cards. You can see in uh, the Philadelphia 1776 chart the accent here on partnerships and alliances in the NATO chart. Unity coming together, yet we, as we know, America is not unified at this time internally, domestically. It's po as polarised, I guess, it, as it has been since the Civil War. Um, and you see a lot of this transiting action uh, around um, communication, stability, a focus on domestic uh, challenges, um, but also this Piscean energy. Now, um, we do have this transiting Neptune opposite Neptune in Virgo in the ninth house in the natal chart. Now, Neptune in uh, Virgo, of course, uh, is the polarity for Pisces, given that Pisces rules the 12th house of the zodiac. And what it does is it grounds, it grounds, it brings into form something. So in this uh, declaration chart, in the 1776 chart, we have something coming into form. What do we have coming into form? The United States. But if we move down to transiting Neptune in the third house in Pisces, we have very much the third house is communication, inner and outer, inner and outer communication. So we see with Pluto, transiting Pluto here in the second house, a real examination of values, personal values. So I don't see any, any transits up here in the seventh house around these, these tremendous partnerships and alliances, which would indicate to me uh, perhaps signing on to take some kind of military action against Russia. At this stage, and I'll have to pull cards, I don't see the US doing that. I see more uh, them coming together the unity, the twos, the diplomacy, the tact, the united action with Europe and the UK uh, to perhaps take some sort of action which stops, uh, stops Russia in its tracks. What could that be? Well, it might be that Ukraine now is now able to join NATO. And NATO forces go there uh, into Ukraine and put that barrier there uh, between the, annex, the invaded territories and, you, and, and larger Ukraine. It might be something like that. Um, now, back to these transits. I'm not saying that there won't be military action against Russia at this stage. I'll, I'll look at that beyond this chart. The reason that I'm a little bit... I guess concern is we have Uranus in Taurus in that fifth house of expression. Uh, and we have the North Node here in Taurus, of course, um, 
and uh, that's in the natal transiting north node in the in the natal sixth house, which of course is stability. The accent is on stability, whether it's internally or externally, it's the same. It's that we have to work toward stability. But this Uranus in Taurus is, uh, is really urging us to create something new, that we can't keep doing things in the old, uh, old way. So um, in the past, you might have seen the US very quick to jump into uh, particularly wars in the Middle East. I, I don't see that this time. I see more a collective action occurring. Now, what that action will be, we'll have to find out. I, I am heartened here transiting Saturn, is trining Saturn in Libra, and this accent on stabilising the US inter internally, doing the work, making sure that that Neptune uh, in Pisces doesn't create something that undermines the stability of the US. Uh, I, th I feel that's more around what the Pluto return brings. Um, so any action against Russia will be a will be a world action. It will be a uh, collective action. But there's a lot of work for the US to do internally to achieve unity within its own borders. And Uranus in Taurus is there for the long haul. Uh, as I've always said about transiting Uranus in Taurus, uh, it is around um, the way that we create, really looking at what we are creating for the longer term with the accent on uh, stability because Taurus uh, loves to be stable. They're not comfortable around um, an environment that is unstable. This transiting, um, I guess, trio, we'll call them, becomes exact on the 3rd of March. And uh, that is Mars, Venus and Pluto. Mars and Venus terribly conjunct, that conjunction as you've known from my or heard me speak about it, talks about a, an intense, an intense emotion. Pluto, of course, uh, bringing something was stolen. Pluto, the god Hades stole um, uh, uh, the goddess's daughter and took her forcibly to the underworld. So we see here in Capricorn about resources, about domination, <laughs> um, about that masculine energy. Uh, we see uh, the potential here um, for unstable events around this Russia-Ukraine situation, um, the stealing of something, the taking of something by force. The other concerning transit here, because as you know, the south transiting, oh, the south node is in, um, is in Scorpio and the moon is, transiting moon is there in Scorpio at this time as well in the collective. And so there is a, there is a lot more to come to the surface, uh, a lot more information cut to come out, a lot more uh, truth to be seen. Um, these are, unstable and changing times. But we also have that North Node in Taurus in the sixth house in the US. So uh, what the US does, how it, it um, works through its internal issues, how it leads in alliances um, is extremely important to all of us. Um, and at this stage, I see that uh, Biden has accomplished much in that regard and Harris. She's been in Munich as well, his vice president, working hard to bring those alliances together. The dictator who invades other countries, whether that be Putin and Russia or Xi Jinping in China, in trying or wanting to invade Taiwan. How are these aggressive dictators stopped? And yes, there will be other dictators that will take their place in time. But it is unity. It is collective action that stops this. But for, first of all, it's justice. And of course, we see Saturn, uh, natal Saturn in the US here in 
the 10th house, the outwardly expression, the outward environment in Libra. And it is, um, there is a, uh, a trine here to uh, transiting Saturn in Aquarius. So what is Aquarius? Aquarius is the law. Um, it is uh, that higher, you know, for the higher good. So um, this is a critical time for the US internally and externally. But I do feel that any action against Russia will be collective. It will be an ally, allied response that doesn't necessarily include uh, war. It may include collective sanctions on Russia. Who will, who will that benefit? Nobody. It certainly will be to the detriment of Russia, Russia, everyday Russians. What else might occur? Ukraine what's left of Ukraine may be allowed to join NATO and a hard boundary put between Putin's aggression and uh, Ukraine. And because after Ukraine, what's next? Poland, Finland, who would know? After Taiwan, what's next? Uh, dictators show no bounds, no boundaries. They step over boundaries. So, um, that is, uh, that is the 22-20-2022. Uh, as we say, we, that's how we express the date here in Australia. Uh, I think you do the opposite um, in the US or other places. Uh, it would be 2-22-2022. It really doesn't matter because you can see the upshot of the twos. It is a time when the world comes together, not apart. And for the US, it is coming together. Why? To achieve more stability. All right, let's throw some cards um, and see what we need to see. I'm just going to throw a couple of these astrology, Black Moon astrology cards. Black Moon astrology cards. All right. If you're interested in the decks I use, I say them. I don't want to keep typing them out. I just go back and listen to the videos. So let's see what we have to learn. 20, let's focus on the 22nd of February, 2022. 22nd, what does this, what do these twos remind us of? Strength in unity, strength of the collective collective will coming together 22nd of february 2022 some overarching energies please all right so we have the lunar eclipse and change now there is an eclipse i think the next one is in is it in april so we've got we're on we know <laughs> basically we know we are in this cycle of change it's in the chart Gemini, I think. Now that's interesting uh, because we have in that third house, let me just go back to my chart here because I made a mental note to myself around this Gemini influence. Where have we got here? Yeah. So we've got Uranus, um, in the US natal chart or Philadelphia 1776 chart in any case, uh, we've got Uranus in Gemini in the sixth house, um, which is interesting. And then we have a conglomeration of these transiting planets in Pisces in that third house. So pay attention wherever you are, <laughs> wherever you are, pay attention to how you're communicating externally and more importantly, how you're communicating, thinking, what are your thoughts, thoughts preceding words, all part of communication. Pay attention to what you're thinking about yourself, first and foremost, and about others, because there is great change, great pressure, great transformation with that Uranus energy for change. And we have Mercury, the mind. Yeah, okay. So that's why I paid attention 
It is around how we think we are being called to account for how we think. So the invasion of those territories in U Ukraine says more about how Putin thinks, how he communicates inner and outer. The thug, the murderer, the invader, the dictator. Pay attention to how you're thinking and how you're communicating because US natal chart with all those planets in the seventh house and in cancer, the sun, your son in cancer, it is really the opposite. It's about doing what is best for the higher good. And that's what we do with Saturn in Aquarius as well. Uh, and we have the sixth house routine, almost what Virgo, Virgo ruling the sixth house. The sixth house, of course, is work. It can be public service, it can be sacrifice as well, it can be health and well being. So there is this great need for the collective health and well-being to be underpinned with some stability and with some unity. All right, let's um, draw some tarot. Let's draw some tarot. So first of all, we'll have an overarching look at the 22nd of February, uh, 2022. In terms of unity, what do we need to see, please? What do we need to see? What will the 22nd of February 2022 bring? What does this mark? What does this energy mark? Okay, so I'm seeing defence and I'm seeing, you know, a lot of um, need for defence. So we have the King of Swords. Okay, now Putin... This card represents Putin, but it also represents the person, the investigator, the the king. This king gets to the truth. This king gets to the truth. Now, in my reading the other day, thank you for all your wonderful comments and do, and, a do, and donations as well. That a particularly significant do, donation came through. Thank you. He was portrayed as a knight or as a page at one st stage. And I said, he's not the king. He's not the king. Now, let's see what this king is crossed by. Anxiety. Okay, so <laughs> anxiety, sleepless nights. Uh, he's worried about what will happen now. Is he ready for war? No, because he, he's like the fox in the hen house. He tries to do it in a sneaky way, like he annexed Crimea, so that no, no big trouble comes back at him. But I don't think that's going to wear this time. The Knight of Pentacles, we want stability. This is not the time to allow aggression. This is that Taurus energy. Uranus and Taurus is change but it's slowing it down. It is having, uh, it is about change for the greater good. It's about change we can all rely on. The Ace of Wands in the past, we always collectively manifest earthly global conditions. Doesn't matter what persuasion you are, whether you're religious, non-religious, Christian, whether you believe in aliens, it doesn't matter. We always manifest our environment. I learned that very early on. We're manifesting something new. We decided that instability and do it and doing things the same old, same old didn't serve us. So we are parallel almost influences in creating something new that is different from the old, but is stable. That's a, a tall order. <laughs> Queen of Wands. Okay, so she follows directly on from this. There's a fearlessness about this energy, this fire energy. Uh, it's about how do we want the world to be in cinders? <laughs> Not able to continue because of um, 
we've polluted everything, we've used up all our resources, there's nothing left. How do we want, how do we want our world to be? That's what we're considering and there's a degree of unity around that. Despite the last gasps of the patriarchy, the eight of pentacles, this is our values, our values, our earthly values, but we, it's almost like we are, uh, are the apprentice in a way. We have the skills to achieve what we wanted to achieve. And we're going to do that, not in a blaze of, I don't know, a blaze of what we might have seen in the old. This is really about changing, really a reset. The Four of Wands coming together and unity, 2022, 22nd of February, 2022. Four of Wands coming together, reunification. And we've got the Ace of Pentacles for that new start. Our security. Our security is, is, is really the bottom line. Anything that takes away or detracts from our security. And remember, we've got Pisces there. Those three planets in Pisces. Um, and, you know, sometimes that Pisces in Virgo actually does need to be challenged by that transiting uh, Neptune. Sorry, that Neptune in Pisces does need to be challenged by that transiting Neptune, because we want to create something new. The Four of Cups. So we have here in the hopes and fears, what have we lost? But look, what have we got? What have we gained? There's an Ace of Cups there. There is a gift for newness being given to us at this time. Now, the outcome is the three of wands. This person has done enough work to create something new. This person isn't, is waiting. So we have to wait. We have to do the work. Saturn tells us we have to do the work. We have to wait. And if we do all of that, this is also foreign, foreign affairs as well. If we do all of that, then we get the prize. What is the prize? A reset and stability. We don't have a revolution. We don't have a world war. But we do have a reset, reset and we do have stable global conditions. And we're going to do that through planning, through strategy. Two is also about the divine feminine. It's a energy that isn't brute force. Kamala Harris in Munich. People coming together, both male and female. Now, I didn't see many other women there in Munich, but I did see her. And that's what this too is about. It's about coming together in unity, not in that active aggressive type of way and we are part of the ten of wands is about closing down we've achieved we're closing down old cycles because we've been prepared to embrace change so is it going to be easy the star card no is there more work to be done yes but we have some really uh, good underpinnings here um, nine of pentacles, independence, because we want our stability and our independence. We are walking that tightrope, but we do have, we do have this king of wands. We have the king, the queen, and the ace of wands, and the four of wands here. We do have this motivation to achieve what we want, and we do have perhaps victory over, over, confusion and the thing that will get us there that will take us there is that 
ability to see things as they are. It's like collectively we've all got our Piscean hats on at the moment. So let's see if Ukraine, before I close down this reading, because in those Pluto returns, you've got to look at the significant events. The significant events for the Pluto return for the US and others, allies. The January 6th coup attempt, which we see playing out, and the end of Putin's American president ally in Trump. We have that. And we have the situation in Ukraine, the um, invasion of Ukraine land by Russia. All right. Show me, show me what will happen with Ukraine. Show me what will happen with Ukraine, please. What will happen with Ukraine? So we've got the two of cups. <laughs> so that collective, um, that collective action here, crossed by the five of cups. What brings the collective together? Putin, if you're listening, what you've done strengthens allies. What, what, what has been lost, they have been strengthened through this. There's two cups remaining in the five of cups. Three have been lost, two have been gained. Foundation of the re reading is six of swords, somehow moving out of troubled waters. We've also got relocation. So you're gonna have people moving back into Ukraine from those occupied territories. Uh, it's not Putin invading yet that I can see because that's about the end to trouble. Coming together alliances, again, what Biden did, what the Democrats did. And in this situation, few. Imagine if Trump had been president. The ace of pentacles, they will be given more money, more resources. That the potential is there for them to uh, become stronger and we've got people pulling together working in teams they will be supported uh, and there will be a commitment to them a formal commitment to help now is that in the form of Ukraine joining NATO right now we've got wounded in battle and fighting so you will have Ukrainian soldiers that may be caught up in the separatist uh, territories but we also have retreat from the fighting as well ten of swords hopes and fears ten of swords it's difficult end of cycle four of pentacles this of course is standing the ground but it's also protecting what's theirs and we've got the family card you know people in the street in Ukraine have been trained uh, to act should there be an invasion and we have the past here situation has its roots in the past and the lovers this gemini card coming up again it would have gone a different way had trump remained president we've got russia the wheel of fortune and the ending endings and new beginnings what's going on here the lie the lie and restriction I feel, as I've always said, whatever Biden does is instrumental in this outcome. I know who is, who is going to have the last say. It's going to be the American president. I want to now just ask quickly, I did pull on this. I thought Ukraine might, be, uh, might join NATO now. Uh, will Ukraine be allowed to join NATO? Will Ukraine be allowed to join NATO? That would mean collective action by NATO forces then to put a barrier there. Will Ukraine be allowed to join NATO? I did feel it will go to the, um, Putin's invasion will go to the international court. Whoever, whoever looks at the law, international law, he will go through the courts. They will do this formally. Um, there could be, is there a provisionary membership there? 
the uh, Page of Wands, crossed by the Four of Cups, so much lost, one cup remaining. Eight of Wands, communications, things happening at lightning speed. The Seven of Pentacles, review, uh, plan A didn't work, we go to plan B. We have the Three of Wands, ultimately, yes, that it's like almost they get like that provisional membership there in some way because justice needs to be served. In the international court, the uh, invasion of these Ukrainian territories will be ruled illegal. And then it, it then comes to the world to say, well, what are we going to do about this? Because we have to have this justice being enacted. The magician manifesting manifesting something peace manifesting uh moving out of these troubled waters ultimately in the long run ukraine is okay um the queen of swords in the hopes and fears and we've got the emperor as the outcome so clarified by the ace of cups the ace of cups i think this is more Biden, there's certainly yes cards, two aces, new starts here. Uh, Ukraine will be helped by the world and it will give them control of their own destiny. It will also give them more money. <laughs> but two aces signify new starts. Looks like there's going to be a barrier put there with these knight, this knight of swords, this slow uh, stability, stable movement. It's not quick. The West has already worked out how they're going to do this. And somehow, somehow, um, making it hard for Putin to get what he wants. Please clarify, it's going to be hard for him, even if he is the emperor. But my question was around NATO. Uh, so these are yes cards, and I have to read them like that. They will be given some kind of provisional or quasi help membership in some way. What is, please clarify this Emperor card. The truth. Three aces now for Ukraine and the eight of pentacles. And the two of cups the west will not abandon ukraine however that however you want to interpret that the uh, far underlying energy is abuse of power somebody that comes in and takes what isn't what is not theirs the hierophant the government some higher form courts the five of wands this partisan energy betrayal betrayal but we also see the sun card the sun sun is currently in pisces pisces of course is the collective it's almost like as i said we're all psychics at the moment we absolutely know what we need to do right that is my 22nd of february 2022 reading thank you for tuning in thanks for your comments thanks for your courtesy and thanks for your donations uh, and your support of my channel. Thank you.